The screencast covers material in Module 2, Lesson 2. It's based on the problem set, and uh, uh, one of the problems uh, from the homework uh, is included. Uh, to give you a few hints, we're not going to work it out for you, but we'll just point out a few potential pitfalls to help you succeed with your homework. So let's get started. On the first part of the homework, we have uh, some things set up here that are helping us out with the process of rounding. Let's go through a few things here. First of all, uh, notice this sign. This means uh, is approximately equal to, not exactly equal to. And generally what we do is we look at each of the factors and we round it to its greatest place because we want to make this easy to figure out. There are some exceptions, but by and large most of us will have an easier time if we round this to, for example, the hundreds place. At this point, we should be able to tell that 597 would be closer to 600 than 500, so we'll round that to 600. And we know that 52 is closer to 50 than 60, so we'll round that. Uh, we can do some of our thinking out here, and um, they don't require you to do this, but I'm going to just review what we did in the previous lesson. I could say that that is 6 times 100 times 5 times 10 equals 6 times 5 times 100 times 10. Just to review that, it's the only time I'm going to do this. So we know that we have our 6 times 5 is 30. And I know that 100 times 10 is 1,000. So 30 times 1,000 is 30,000. And then all we have to do is simply recopy our uh, estimated product in the line below. A reasonable estimate for 590, 590, 597 times 52 is 30,000. The next example, I'm just going to do the rounding out uh, without decomposing the problem. So we have 1,103. Well, that's between 1,000 and 2,000. It's clearly closest to 1,000. So we'll give an estimated product, or excuse me, factor of 1,000. Now we're going to look at the next one. Our greatest value is 59. That's between 50 and 60. It's closest to 60, so we'll put in our 60. We know that our 6 times 1 is 6, and we have 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. So the answer is 60,000. We'll simply rewrite our estimated product down here. This next one is a little bit different. Let's see if we can move this just a bit so it's a little easier to work with. Yes, it works. I notice that my second factor is 25. And 25 is right in the middle. We'd normally round it up to 30. But 25 is easy to work with because I can think of quarters. So let's round the first factor first. We know that 5,840 is between 5,000 and 6,000. It's closer to 6,000. So I'm going to put 6,000 in here. Now, can I do 6 times 25 easily? I think so. 6 times 25, that would be 6 quarters, and 6 quarters would be 150. So, we're going to leave that as 25. I'm going to 6 times 25 is 150. 150 what? Thousands. And we will simply copy that down there. When we're estimating, we should always look for easy ways to do things. And if we do a little thinking, sometimes we can do something that's uh, different from simply rounding, especially when we have something in the middle like that. Uh, for rounding up, rounding up from 25 to 30 is, is quite uh, a large jump. However, um, again, just look for these strategies. If you decided to use 30 for that, I wouldn't mark it wrong. But I just want to point out some alternative strategies for estimating. We don't always necessarily round 
uh, to the greatest place if we can find something that's easy to work with. Okay, this one, uh, what we want to do here is simply uh, look at our example. And what do we do? Wrong tool. We take these and we round them both to the greatest place. So this one rounds to the nearest thousand, this one to the nearest ten. Then we take the rounded factors and find the product, and that would be an estimated product. Let's start with a few examples here. So I have 28,290. That's between 20,000 and 30,000, and it's closer to 30,000. And I have 420, and that's between 400 and 500, and it's closest to 400. And of course we could notice that uh, there's a relationship between problem A and problem B, right? So what are we going to do? 4 and 3 times 4 is 12. And I have 10,000 times uh, 100. And 10,000 times 100 is a million. And our estimate is 12 million. Let's look at the next one. 8,932. 8,932 is between 8,000 and 9,000. 59 is between 50 and 60. We'll multiply the front. We could decompose, but we don't. We're, we're past that now, I believe. So we have 54. And 10 times 1,000 is 10,000. We have 540,000. I'm just going to do the, the D and then go on to some other examples. The only reason I want to talk about D is that we are in unit form. So uh, it might be easiest to put those both in standard form and then do our rounding. So I have 89 tens, and that's 890, times 63 tens, 630. 890 is between 800 and 900, and closest to 900. 630 is between 600 and 700, and that's closest to 600. So we have 9 times 6, again, is 54. And 100 times 100 is 10,000. We can also notice the, the relationship between the zeros in the factors and the zeros in the, in the estimated products. Moving on. Yet another format for largely the same work is we are given a pair of factors in the intermediate step here. We need to round both of those. We need to make sure whatever we round it to equals that product right there. I suspect that things will work out just fine. 571 is between 500 and 600. It is closest to 600. 43 is between 40 and 50, it is closest to 40. And indeed, if we multiply 600s times 4 tens, we'll end up with our 24,000. One more example. Let's look at our 726, that's between 700 and 800, it's closest to 700. We have 674. That's between 600 and 700. So that rounds to 700 because it's closer to 700. 7 times 7 is 49. 100 times 100 is 10,000. It's 49 times 10,000 is 490,000. We're going to jump over now to an actual homework problem. Uh, again, I'm going to just give you a little guidance, but I'm not doing it out for you. I just want to point out a bit possible. All right. If we look at this, Raphael wants to buy a new car. He needs a down payment of $3,000 if he saves $340 each month. About how many months will it take him to save uh, the, for the down payment? 
And the critical word here is about. Okay, so that tells us that we want to estimate it. And we can use the same procedure we have uh, by rounding and then estimating. You'll notice that 3,000 is already easy to work with. So the only thing that we're going to have to round is 340. But let's look at the second part, B. His new car payment will be $288 each month for five years. What is the total of these payments? Well, what word is missing, okay, from this? And it's interesting that the, uh, the work problems from the uh, practice set actually show an estimate. But the problem doesn't ask for an estimate. It asks for the total of these payments. So I'm going to want you to find the actual number here. Because once again, we don't have that about. If I wanted to estimate it, I would look at five years, whoops, five years, and we have monthly payments, and if we were to estimate it, and again, I'm going to ask you to do the problem out, we would have to look at our five years, and we know the payments are monthly, so times 12, of course that's 60, and then we would round this other number. But again, I don't see the word about. Maybe they intended to put the word about in, but I'd rather you actually solve the problem. We've done math like this before. I don't think you're going to have too much of a problem with that. So again, we will have to use this number, though. We'll have to use our 60, because 5 times 12 is 60. That's the number of months in 5 years. You should be able to do it from there. We can decompose 60 into 6 times 10 and work it step by step. That should help you get through your homework successfully.